Welcome to Mount Panorama. My name is Kilvaden Rover of the JSRA and I will be your guide for this track walks. This series has been developed by the JSRA to help drivers become acquainted with the many tracks we visit virtually. Today, I'll be sharing some tips on how to be fast around each of the 23 corners of this 6.2 kilometer track. Let's get started. A lap of Mount Panorama begins on a short start finish straight, heading into a 90 degree left hander. Position the car as rightmost as possible, braking at 75 meters and trail braking into the apex of the corner. Quickly jump back on the throttle, using all of the curb on the exit. Careful not to break too late going into T1, also known as Hell Corner, for its frequent crashes, as a good exit is essential heading onto the 1.1 km long mountain straight. Turn 2 can be tricky, especially when in close proximity to other cars. It's an off camber corner, so the car may want to wash a wide away from the ideal line. It's important to find the right braking and turn in point here. Brake around where the access road on the left is, earlier or later depending on the, your driving style. Don't maintain full braking pressure for too long as you're braking uphill so the car will slow down quicker than normal. Trail braking is essential through turn 2 to ensure the car settles into the proper groove on the inside line. Avoid touching the curb and power out of the corner, going as close up to the wall as you dare on exit. Move the car back to the left hand side of the track then back to the right and turn in for turn 3 at the gap in the barrier, allowing the car to understeer past the wall on the inside. This should position the car for the longest, straightest possible braking zone as you head into turn 4. Brake in as straight a line as possible and release the brakes slowly, allowing the car to turn into turn 4. Gently apply the throttle while opening the steering to avoid oversteer and make the track as straight as possible as you approach T5. Coming up to Grippin's mount, allow the car to drift back to the left-hand side and prepare to fling the car into the right-hander of Reed Park as soon as you pass the tree. Understeer just past the wall on the right side and narrowly avoid the wall on the left on exit. Mount Panorama is best known for its tight twisty layout and unforgiving walls. However, if you aren't scraping the walls, you aren't going fast enough. Move back to the left-hand side of the track as you press the hill and approach Solman Park a very fast and very tricky left-hander. Turn in early, raising the apex and feathering the throttle throughout the bend. Again, bravery is required to run out as close to the wall as possible on exit to be fast at this track. That sequence very quickly leads into McPhillamy Park. Dab the brakes as you press the bump and turn in, eyeing the curb on the inside. It may look as though you're heading for the wall, but you should just miss it and get a nice run going into Skyline. Up next is the challenging downhill complex, a series of sharp switchbacks, each leading into the next. You kinda have to give, get it right from the beginning and keep the momentum going into each corner, scrubbing off as little speed as possible. Precision is key. Position the car as the leftmost as possible. Get right up against the wall. Quickly but gently apply the brakes and turn in, making the first corner as straight as possible to minimize chances of locking the brakes while braking downhill. Ride the curb and increase braking pressure as you approach the second right handle and trail off the brake to get rotation into the last of the S's before the dipper. For the dipper, release the brakes completely and turn in early and quickly to coerce the car to understeer just past the wall on the inside. Get right on the power and straight line the exit as best as possible to keep minimum speed up. All this happens very quickly, so practice, practice, practice until you nail it. Next up is Forrest's elbow. Keep the car to the left, stab the brakes and turn in sharply, trail braking to get the front end to rotate nicely back over to the right, going down the hill into the elbow. Turn in early and trail brake to keep the car stable as you drop down through the corner. Be patient on corner exit. If you get back on the throttle too early, you'll go into the wall. But if you take too long, you'll lose time on the long back straight. If you get it right, move up through the gears on the back stretch, staying to the left of the track. Coming up to the right hand kink, 
drift over to the shoulder which appears to wind the track and input less steering angle heading into the chase. Heavy braking in a straight line at 100 meter board, trailing off as you approach the final board. Avoid the curb on the inside and gently squeeze back onto the throttle to avoid losing the rear end on exit. Pass the pit entry lane and position the car to the right hand side as you approach the final corner. Brake at the 100 meter board and trail brake into the corner, avoiding the raised curb on the inside. Then it's a short run to the line to complete a lap of the world famous Mount Panorama circuit. In GT4 cars such as this Mercedes AMG GT4, the car being used for the inaugural Peak Performance 7 Round Series, streaming live on Sportsmax and Twitch. Pros aim for a target lap time of around 2 minutes 11 seconds, 0.9. Pro Am times are around 2 minutes 13.4, and amateur times range anywhere from 2 minutes 16 seconds upwards. Now, let's see what a full lap of the Mount Panorama circuit looks like. And that concludes our track walks for the Mount Panorama circuit. Remember to stay focused, hit your marks, and take advantage of every opportunity to gain time on your competitors. Good luck out there.